Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video I'll be going through the Melbourne versus North Melbourne game in which Melbourne shut North Melbourne down. As simple as that. I've never seen something from even in most games like I think I've rarely seen a team get shut down like that in an AFLW game, let alone it be a top four matchup and that ugh, such a high quality team in North Melbourne. They didn't kick a single point or kicked one point in, I think it's roughly, I think it was roughly 59 minutes or something like that with time on that they didn't kick a single point. That's how long Melbourne shut them out. And in that run, Melbourne scored, I believe it was, um, it was four goals, six to nothing in that run, which isn't even that bad, but it was 13 to seven at that point. Then it got to 37 to 13 or whatever. And then North Melbourne kicked a point with like 45 seconds to go or something. Um, but yeah, just a really crazy game. Um, another tip that I got completely wrong and it wasn't the strongest. I mean, it was a high scoring fancy game. But it was so evenly spread here. You'll see with the the scoring here that so many got between what's looking at here forty to um forty to seven uh, forty to seventy, which is still a decent score for most people. For um, but a lot of these girls sort of score higher than that. You can see Bruton finally failed. So for those people who brought Bruton in, failed. Um, Garner failed. Riddell pass mark on a ninety four. You'd say um. Paxi failed 67, Hall failed 59, so a lot of the top tier girls failed, and I think that's what sort of support, what shocked the rankings this week. Um, you'll see that in the teams team review video on Wednesday, but yeah, that was sort of the reason I think a lot of shocks occurred. But anyway, before we get into the video, remember to like and subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload, and let's get into the video. So as you can see here. Um, that's again just decided not to uh, work properly. So if I just go uh, like that, does that is that no? That's not wanting to work. So um, on the fly, um, if I just change it to window capture and then back to display capture, there we go. So on the fly editing, they <laughs> that should that should work now. If I scroll, it was stuck on the. It was stuck on this, even though I was I was on about this part of the screen for some reason. But anyway, back to the video. Um, I don't know why that happens, and it happens semi regularly to the point that I have to almost uh, restart some videos because that happens. Um, but at least my hotkeys are working at the moment. Anyway, Hanks a one thirteen twenty six four and eight, and a goal as well to go with it. Minus four free kick differential doesn't matter terribly much. Tackles eight, which is a good um, good amount. And I'm pretty sure was she the one that got off to a flyer? Yeah. You can see here 70 in the first and then still 43 in the second to get to a 113. Purcell a 111 with a 44 last quarter. Absolutely huge. And that's the problem with these girls. And that's what I think um, I would love if um, DFS had uh, quicker stats uplay. Because if we know that Purcell, Hanks... Um, or some of the other forwards like Kaufman or Hamilton or Ran uh, Randall or something like that have the midfield CBAs, I think I'd have them in my trade plans, like locked down in my trade plans on Monday, Tuesday, but we have to wait till like Thursday night for that to occur. But still, Hanks are 113, huge. Purcell a 111, huge. Um, Mac and 89, McNamara 67, Paxi 67, 30.3. She's really slowed down. And the thing about Paxi here, as you can see, the um, touches from the last video. Um, Paxi, a 73 average on the year just because of that sort of 87 and an 80. Oh, she's going to be unders next year, isn't she? She was priced at around, I believe, um, I, be I don't know exactly what she was priced. Um, let's go divided by that. I believe she was priced at around about the same number last year, 74, but um, at the start of this year, but she, that was with the shortened quarters, so she's really, for some reason, not jumped up in sort of that average just due to the, the increase in quarters, which is slightly surprising, um, but yeah, moving on. Mithin, 66, Pit Fitzsimmons, 60, Gillard, 59, Hoare, 59 as well, that was surprising that Hoare did nothing. 
Um, and that'll be one to look at, whether they're um, with their next game, is it against St Kilda or Richmond or something? They ha- Or are they against the, like, the Melbourne or something? Um, let's see, where is Hoare here? Let's just see. They've got Frio, uh, so not any of those teams. I just named like half the comp and they weren't even playing them. So yeah, Hoare 59, she plays Frio next, so I expect her to bounce back. Heath, Pierce, Sheriff, Zanker, Goldrick, West, Birch, Gay, Chaplin, Campbell, Wilson, Bannon. The weird thing about, um, about the likes of, um, Melbourne is that even though they're such a good side, whether they're seven and one, I think they're top of the ladder. And I think this happens with Geelong. Um, who do you actually pick out of? Look at look at, and I think this will show it perfectly. Um, Nam, and then we go to percentage selected. You got Hoar. Um, Paxman, I think, is a bad selection. Gay at the moment is averaging forty six on the last three, 49. She's going to be traded out again. And that's 15%. Then you've got Taylor Harris. That's just, I think, the hype of Taylor Harris. And she's not even playing that well. She hasn't played in a couple of rounds anyway. So that's just dead teams. Um, 5% on Macken. You wouldn't be playing her as well. She didn't play last round, I don't think. If we look at look at that, she didn't play last round. Wilson as well, a 300k rookie. I think that's just because it's a rookie. Um... And then you have Bannon, who's playing up forwards, so you should be having her in itself. Um, then you have Gillard the Ruck, um, and so it's like 3.1. Then we look at, just stroll through these other ones. 63, 27, 20, uh, 29, 27, 10. Um, look at Carlton, 36, 18, 14. Uh, look at Brisbane, for example. Um, Brisbane is sort of the same thing as uh, what occurs there. Collingwood, 28, 21, 9, 7. And I'm surprised Frederick's that low, to be honest. Essendon, you got a low, a big number there. Geelong, you got the two big ones. And then Hoare, McDonald, etc. Um, Gold Coast would have a big number. No, they're at, Gold Coast is low as well. Um, GWS have the three big girls as well. Um, Hawthorne have just Stratton and then where is Bates is low surprising um, now we went through North Melbourne you've got the big ones as well for North Melbourne being a top team for that's I'm surprised Nam doesn't follow that trend you got Shearer and Conti for Richmond like I can go through this list and I'm I'm pretty sure you'll see Sydney have a large yeah you've got Gardner Malloy even Head still Vale still for some reason and then Moffat has dropped through the floor because she's out injured but Moffat would have been about that 15, 20% if she didn't get injured and Edmonds and Good um, had still gotten injured. She would have been a lot, lot higher. But, um, yeah, I think that just proves that um, there's something, this Melbourne side, they operate different to the likes of the North and the um, and some other top sides in that they don't, it's really a massive team game and you might play your part one game and get a big score like 100, but the next game you might only need to score like a 40 or something like that to help get your team over the line. Then we move over to North, and you see here, Mia King, a 104, and I'm pretty sure this was just a tackling special. Yeah, 13 tackles, 20 touches. Riddell, 31, and just look at her quarter-time score, and look at her half-time score, and then her three-quarter-time score as well was 46, and that was from a last-minute gash in the third quarter dash in the third quarter where she was on about 35 or something like that and dashed her way up to 46 and I think she even should have been higher I think she missed a tackle or two in there which would have got her up to 100 um and I think a handball or two as well they don't they don't they miss those cheeky little handballs um from Riddell and stuff like that um but yeah imagine an owner like me being like oh yeah Riddell you might want to pick it up you're on six at quarter time you might want to pick it up you're on 19 at Half time might want to pick it up. You're only on 46 for her to get to 94. That was the biggest save I've ever seen. And for her to do what she did last week with a 139, was it? I think she might have scored more in the space of I think, I think it was about seven minutes or something like that than she did for about two quarters as well as about 14 minutes. So, about what's that, 48 minutes of time. She covered more fancy points in this Port Adelaide game, uh, more points in seven minutes of the Port Adelaide game than she did in, what did I just say, 48, 49 minutes of the of this Melbourne game. So it just shows the quality of the Melbourne midfield, to be honest, that they, they stopped her. As simple as that. Garner 86, she got stopped as well. 
um, just never got a big, never got that big quarter, never got that thirty or forty point quarter that can really tear it open. O'Shea is an interesting one I've looked at in the trades and stuff like that. I just don't know about the consistency there. Carney King Smith Bruton had a shocker. Uh, had a 29 point last, uh, basically getting half her points in the last, a 15 and 7, just didn't get the tackles involved, and that's pretty much the way it goes, and she's back to reality, I knew that was going to happen though, and I told people not to get her, because I don't expect the three, the trio of Riddell, Garner, and Bruton to be able to do what they were doing against the big sides, and they've got, um, who do they have next, they've got Adelaide next, they're not going to score well next week, um, I don't think, as Adelaide, I think, might even run a tag. It might be the tag against the tag. It, it could easily be taggers playing against each other, like, honestly. Uh, which will be funny. But, anyway, Gat, Rennie, Shannon, Wright, Sherlaw, Puller, Ferguson, Craven, Eddie, Martin, Tripoli, uh, Tripoli O'Loughlin, and Randall. But that pretty much is the video of the shock horror game of North Melbourne's uh, season, basically. That pretty much summed up why I don't think North Melbourne will win it this year, um, as they just, they weren't able to change to a plan B, it was always kicked down the line, and there was nothing in there, they just couldn't do anything, and they turned it over way too many times, but anyway, that is the video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow, on Tuesday, for the Collingwood, Geelong, Frio, St Kilda, and Essendon West Coast games, but anyway, I'll see you guys then, bye guys.